Oh, good morning, how are you? Welcome to my morning bushwalk. It's beautiful out here this morning. I think uh, it, it's time we had a little talk about some of the things that may you may encounter when you, you're out on your bushwalk in, in Australia, particularly this time of year in spring. And we're going to talk about snakes. Why? Because by a long shot, the greatest danger that you'll encounter in the Australian bush is its poisonous snakes. Now one of the reasons why we have so many poisonous snakes in Australia is ironically because of human activity. It's because of farming. Farmers have cleared vast tracts of the Australian bush and the normal distribution of snakes has changed. Uh, previously, because of territorial uh, uh, um, preferences for snakes, you know, they like to have their own set territory and they defend that and mate within it and that kind of thing. Vast tracts of land have been cleared for farming and as a result you've got a lot of wheat and barley and mice and rats have been introduced from Europe and uh, they've bred up in huge numbers of course and they're the ideal food source for snakes. So the number of snakes in Australia since human habitation, <clears throat> particularly white human habitation, has increased quite dramatically. Uh, yeah, certain irony in it isn't there. Uh, so when you're out walking in the bush, you're quite likely to come across a snake. Now I'm particularly conscious of this right at this particular point in time because in the last week I've encountered poisonous snakes on three different occasions. Well, really I've encountered snakes because there's only poisonous snakes in this region. We don't have pythons here that I'm aware of. They're, they're really only the poisonous snakes. The vegetation is not suitable for pythons and creatures like that. Not that I'm aware of. They'd be very rare. So you, if you meet a snake here, it's going to be a poisonous snake. How poisonous? Well, it ranges. You've got the black snake, which is the least powerful venom, and you could survive the bite of a black snake. So if you get, by, get bitten by a black snake, don't panic too much because you're not going to die straight away. Um, you will get very, very sick. Unless you're a small child or someone who's got a weakness, um, that kind of thing. Um, but you should get to a hospital immediately and get the anti-venom and uh, the effects of the, the snake venom will be minimised. The other thing we have here is a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> um, the next snake that you'll encounter perhaps is the eastern brown snake or sometimes known as the common brown snake which makes it sound, you know, a bit ordinary. Common. Yeah, it's just a common brown snake. <laughs> yeah. Well, the common brown snake or eastern brown snake is the second most venomous snake in the world. Now, you'll hear a lot of claims about how venomous snakes are because quietly everybody's proud of their deadly creatures in their own country and the claims tend to get exaggerated. But uh, I have a, a, a good friend who's actually a scientist. He's a toxicologist and he milks snakes and makes anti... Uh, uh, venom serums and so on uh, and uh, the last time I was at his uh, laboratory uh, he was milking a brown snake and from one six foot brown snake which is not a particularly large creature to be honest uh, they're quite a slender thing uh, from that one milking he produced a vial of venom and told me that was enough to kill everybody in a small town so you judge how powerful the venom of a brown snake is. Now fortunately the brown snake only has small fangs, they're only three millimeters long in general even from an adult snake. But you can see that because of the power of the venom you only have to get the tiniest tiniest amount of venom into your bloodstream and you're in serious trouble. So if you find yourself in a situation where you've been bitten by a brown snake in any way, shape or form, you should get yourself to a hospital immediately because it contains one of the po most powerful neurotoxins on the planet. It will arrest your breathing and you'll basically choke to death. Now what do I mean by that? That sounds a bit bizarre. Snake bites you, you choke to death. How's that work? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, I've seen a number of creatures killed by brown snakes, fortunately not a human yet. Um, the largest creature I've seen killed by a snake would have been a sheep. Up in uh, the central Australia, I was assisting a mate on his uh, muster on his property. More of a recreational pursuit for me, but I was enjoying myself. And there was a lamb. Now, in Australia, a lamb 
people around the world really. The lambs are not what you might think of like a little bar lamb, you know, little baby sheep. Lambs are regarded as having so many teeth. So you say, oh, there's a four tooth lamb and a six tooth lamb and so on. That's the way they're rated. So they can be quite a large uh, sheep, really. Now this uh, lamb would have been about a six tooth and it would have weighed about 50 kilograms, I'd say, to be honest in my guess, you know. Some of them are about 80 kilograms, you know, about the same weight as a decent sized man, but this would be about 50 kilogram animal and a brown snake bit it while we were mustering uh, the sheep in a yard. Now what happened to the brown snake? What was the power of the venom? What did it do? Well, uh, I wanted to shoot, shoot the, the sheep, to be honest, to put it out of its misery, but uh, the uh, property owner was against the idea because it scares the rest of the sheep and makes it extremely difficult to work with them, you know. So we watched it die. It's his decision, it's his property. You wanna, you're on a, a farming property in Central Australia, the pastoralist is the king. And so I watched it die. But it was a good lesson in what a snake's venom does to you. Because the, the, the lamb stood, looking quite ill for a while, for about 10 minutes, I'd say, maybe a bit longer, 10 to 15 minutes, it stood and gradually looked like it was staggering, you know, the venom was clearly spreading through its body and having an effect. And, and then it fell over and it started coughing. And this is the effect of the neurotoxin part of the snake's venom where it constricts the, the breathing process. And it started spitting blood because the other thing that the brown snake venom does in particular is that it, it uh, inhibits coagulation. It encourages coagulation around the wound, which is why evolution has allowed the snake to keep all the venom as possible in your body. But generally speaking, you'll bleed from internal organs. And in the case of the sheep, it seemed to be particularly from the lungs. Although I didn't do an autopsy, but it was spitting up blood and it was coughing and uh, obviously having a lot of trouble uh, breathing. And then after uh, about 25 minutes, it was over, it was dead. But it took 25 minutes to die and I wouldn't regard it as being a great way to go, to be honest, you know, uh, which is why I wanted to shoot the poor thing. But uh, that's a brown snake venom.